I hope everybody's having a good day. I don't know where we, you are in the UK. We're based in the Isle of Wight, obviously working from home along with everybody else at the moment. And it's the first day of absolute torrential rain I think we've had in, in weeks. So hopefully my microphone isn't picking it up. Hey, sorry, back. Oh, hello, whoever that was. Uh, nice, thanks for coming in. Uh, no worries, Ben. I'm, I'm pretty close to you. I'm just, I can actually see the Isle of Wight from uh, my house. Oh, hi, <laughs> I thought you could see me from your house. That would be weird. I don't know, I can see the Isle of Wight from my house. <laughs> Very good. Whereabouts are you, Darren? Uh, I'm just uh, uh, up on the hills in a place called High Cliff. Okay. Very good. Uh, just near Christchurch, not too far. Very good. Very good. And Darren, uh, how about yourself? Are you, are you, do, you, do you work for Graham? Are you a plumber? Are you, uh, what's, your, what's your background? Yeah, no, I'm the commercial services director for Graham. Excellent, excellent. Uh, looking forward to it. Very good. Hi, Mark. Nice to see you. Hi, Ben. Join you, right? Yeah, I'm good. Thank you. I'm good. And Mark, I'm guessing with that Graham hat on that you're, uh, you work for Graham. Or maybe you're just a, a super fan, a Graham super fan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I work, I work from Wales and Transport Manager for West Midlands. Very good, very good. Anybody else on the call, if you want to turn on your webcams, feel free. Um, you, you know, there's, we, we've, the room's filling up now. So we've got nine participants. Oh, I'm happy. D seven nine nine two one seven four. Nice to meet you. Yeah, it rolls off the tongue, doesn't it? It does roll yes. off the tongue. <laughs> Sanger one identifiers, yeah. <laughs> nice to meet you. So we've got ten people in the call, and hi, Darren. Nice to see you. Now, Darren, I've got to ask: Is that a Garmin Fenix watch? Uh. It's a Garmin, yeah. <laughs> I'm currently thinking about Thanks. getting one of those. <laughs> Very good. Oh, well, they're only ever good if you do something with them. Oh, that's true. That's true. So we have 11 people in the call run. at the moment. So as I was just saying at the beginning, um, if you're here for the intro, uh, we're just going to we'll leave it to about two or three minutes past. Obviously, we had a problem with YouTube this morning. Um, so you have to follow a link to find us. YouTube have helpfully decided to remove the ability to share desktop um, in the past week, which may, kind of makes a demo like this a bit pointless. So um, I think so far, here we've got 12 people coming in now. We have Hayley, I know Hayley works for Graham. Hi Hayley, nice to see you, oh, nice to have you. And what I'll do when the when we actually start, I'm going to sit, I'll mute everybody's microphones uh, whilst I go do the demo. But we have a chat on the right hand side. <clears throat> you can see I've posted something in there. If you just want to ask a question, um, just type it out into the chat, and then I can cover it off whilst we're doing the demo. Or if I miss it, we can do it at the end as well. And this Zoom meeting is being recorded, so we will stick this onto YouTube and we'll share it via email if you want to get a copy of it as well. So if there's anything which you want to go back and look at, you have a copy of it. Okay, we've got 15 people in. Let's give it one more minute before we start. I'd imagine everyone in this call is getting fairly comfortable with using Zoom and other video chats during this pandemic. I've just literally gone off one Zoom to get onto this Zoom. So <laughs> yeah. One of those. Yeah. When my grandchildren ask me, what did you do during the great pandemic? I will say I was in Zoom chats <laughs> for most yeah. of it. <laughs> Very good. Okay, you, so it's two minutes past. So I think we... Are going to kick off. We um, we're probably going to have as many people as we're going to get. People might come and go. Uh, no doubt through it. So, once again, if you just joined uh, slightly late, um, there's a chat on the right hand side. If you have any questions, 
about uh, the Grey map, or if there's anything you'd like me to cover, uh, please just answer it. Uh, so ask a question in there and I can answer it. Um, if you're watching this uh, Zoom conference and you don't work for Graham, and I know there's quite a few people from Graham on the call, and if you have a question about Graham, um, feel free to ask, ask it, and maybe somebody from Graham can actually hop in and answer it as well. So uh, I want this to be as collaborative as possible, and if you want to ask any questions, let's go for it. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to mute everybody, and I'm going to share my screen. There we go. So hopefully you can see my screen. Um, can somebody with a webcam just give me a thumbs up to just confirm that you can see? Excellent. Thank you very much. Okay. So welcome to Graham the Plumbers app. And uh, what I want to do is just give a quick overview about uh, who I am, who Powered Now is, and really what it, uh, what it is that we've built for Graham. Uh, so I'm Ben. I'm one of the founders of Powered Now. We've been building software for people that work in the trade for, crikey, about seven years now. So we have a large number of people that use our product. And uh, the, our entire goal is to try and make people's lives a bit easier. So admin, paperwork, um, with all due respect to anybody on this call that works in the trade, uh, that is always has always been a problem for uh, the trade. Uh, I think Plumbers and heating engineers probably tend to do things slightly better than, than others, but it's still a, still a bit of a nightmare. Um, I'll never forget when we first started the business, I was talking to a heating installer who told me it takes him longer to fill out the CP12 form than actually do the boiler check. And when he told me that, I thought something's definitely broken uh, when it comes to admin for the trade. So that's what we built. Our product helps people with their invoicing, their quoting, and obviously for the Graham app, actually creating orders and sending it into Graham as well. So uh, for those on the call that are maybe work in a branch um, or maybe you go into the branch a lot, hopefully that's going to be something which is going to help you out. So let's take a quick look. This is our website. This is GrahamThePlumbersApp.com. And in the top right hand corner, you see a login and register. If you click on this link, that will actually take you into the web version of Graham the Plumbers app. Um, but this app is available in the app stores as well. So if you're running a, uh, an iOS device or an Android device, an iPad, a phone, you can download this and I'll just show you my, my webcam. I have got it running on my phone here as well. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to demo this on the web version, but everything I'm going to show you, you can also do on the mobile and tablet version as well. So you click login and register and that'll take you onto this screen here. And the first thing we're going, to, we're going to do is we're going to actually register an account. So just stick in an email address, a password, and press the register button. Ah, I've already used that password. Hang on, give me two seconds. And there we go. And we go into a quick form to fill in. And this is just information about your business. So uh, some information in quickly. Just call myself Matt. Um, so I've been going through the heat run stuff. Uh, they've returned about 50 lines of stock. Oh, hang on, we've got somebody trying um, to go to mute. How far mark. do you want me to go there back? Okay. Because so, there's sorry. some stuff that, you know, 2006. There we go. There we go. So the registration is, is super quick. Um, it's just information about who you are. And then it asks for your address. Now, why would an app ask for your address? Well, actually, we're creating paperwork. So one of the very the key things you have to put in your paperwork is your address. So let's stick some information on here. And if you're VAT registered, you can put your VAT number in as well. Now we'll talk about VAT in a moment. And finally, you can choose a template. So the Graham app comes with 24 uh, built-in templates. And these are templates you'll use for all the paperwork that you can produce out of the product. Um, there's all sorts of different designs. Uh, we have one, I think, with some even some copper on. Uh, but you can hop through these designs and choose one to your heart's content. So I'm going to just go with this one here. 
And all this can be changed again in the settings. So I'm going to press next. And then the next step is to add logos. So if you want to put your company logo on the top, you can do that. Uh, we've got a whole bunch of inbuilt logos already you can add. So I'll stick the gas safe one on for the moment. And again, this can all be changed. You don't have to do this during the settings, but. And let's press finish. So we've set up our, our gray map. That's all we've done. It's, it's taken us a few seconds. We've answered a couple of questions and we've actually set some, you know, some documents up. So what's going to be produced by the product now is going to look good. Um, and it's going to be easy to create these things uh, again from your mobile tablet or on the web. So really we've done the hardest bit. So this is the dashboard. Welcome to the gray map. And down the left hand side, you can see some buttons, home, sales, costs, contacts and finances. In the middle, we've got these two banners and at the bottom, we've got these quick action buttons. And we've got a few things up here as well, which I'll talk about later. And in the bottom right, you can see this yellow chat icon. So what I want to cover in this demo is I want to show you how we can use the product to add a customer. So uh, really, I like to think of the Graham app and Powered Now as a replacement for the black book, you know, the thing which sits on the dashboard with all the job information in. So we can add a customer into the, into the product and we can, all, we can always keep track of what that we've done for that customer. Um, but then we want actually to we actually want to create some documents for them as well. So the first thing we're going to do in this demo is we're going to create a quote, we're going to create an invoice, and then we're going to create a purchase order. And I'm going to show you how the Graham catalog and purchase orders work hand in hand. Now it's not just about sales in this app; it's also about costs. So as well as doing all the nice things like invoicing, quoting, and purchase orders, actually you can create some supplier invoices as well, and you can capture your expenses. Now, this is great because actually one of the bits of feedback we always hear from customers is, is actually creating a quarterly invoice. That's one thing, but actually keeping track of the outgoings is um, just as important. And if you're VAT registered, if you're keeping track of the sales and the costs, actually doing your VAT return is super easy as well. So we're going to cover that. Um, and finally, we'll talk about finances and I'll show you how uh, Powered Now is supporting the Graham app. And um, if anybody has any questions while you're using the products, how you can get in contact with us. So let's start off. We're going to add a customer in. So if you look on the left hand side, we have this button called contacts. You can also add a contact from this big pink button here, this new customer or supplier. So I'm going to click into there and you can see I've already got two contacts in my setup. So I've got a demo company and I've got Graham, the plumber's merchant who's already in. Now, if you look at the top, I've got view all contacts. If I click view any customers, you can see I have a customer in the system. If you click view suppliers, you can see I've got Graham already added in as a supplier. So we're going to create a new contact, a new customer. So we tick that. Um, call it Mr. Ben Smith. And we just stick an email address in for him. I'll stick my email address so I can show you what happens. And if you know the address, you can stick the address in here. But for the sake of the demo, I'll just do it quickly. OK, so we have a new customer called Mr. Ben Smith. Now, let's create a quote for Ben. So maybe we've been asked to go to his house and we'd like to uh, quote for a boiler install. So if I go back to the home screen, you can see there's a new quote button here. So if I press this new quote button, you can see the first thing that pops up are my customers. So we choose our customer, Mr. Ben Smith. And we get this screen, which is called Manage Pricing. And this is where we can actually add things onto our documents. So we have two buttons. We have an Add New Item or Add From Catalog. Now, I know most people on this call will be very interested to see what happens when you press the Add From Catalog button, but we're going to hold the suspense on that one for a bit later. So we're going to press the Add New Item. And this is where we can add some things into it. So maybe it's a really simple quote. We don't want to go into much the way of detail. 1500 pounds to create a new boiler. We press save. And we press next. And basically with no effort at all, with a click of a few buttons, I've created a quote which I can send to my customer. You can see all the information on it. So you can see the logo we added. This is the template, uh, the customer details, minus the address because I didn't fill it in, the business details and the description and some prices. Now, everything on this screen is editable. You can change what you send to customers. You can hide things. You can show things. You can use discounts. 
But really what I wanted to do for the first document is to show you how easy it is to send one. So I've created it, I press confirm, and all I have to do now is press send. And I have the customer's email address and the customer will get that, that quote. Now, the wonderful thing about the Graham app is everything is tracked. So one of the complaints we hear from a lot of uh, Powered Nows users is, well, when I send a quote, I've got absolutely no idea what happens to that. Um, sometimes I send a quote out and, you know, I don't, you know, did, does the customer want me to do the work? I have to chase them. It's actually exactly the same with invoices. When an invoice gets sent out, sometimes it can take a long time to get paid. The customer sometimes asks me if, um, uh, did they actually get hold of that invoice? Well, everything in this is tracked. And you can see it currently says sent. What I'll do quickly on my mobile is I'll show you what the customer gets. If I can find it. Actually, what I'll do, I'll show you on my screen, it's probably easier. So the customer on their email will get a link like this. Now we've, asked, we've sent them a quote and they've got two buttons. They can accept or reject it. They can also download it. But let's say the customer decides to go ahead with the work. They press the accept quote button. There's an amount here for accepting or rejecting it. They press accept. And if you're using the Graham app on your mobile phone, that will pop up immediately on your phone telling you, congratulations, uh, the client has accepted the work. It's time to go and do it. Now that alone saves so much time for people in the trade. And if I look back at the, if I go back into the Graham app, if I hop over here to my sales button, you can see I've got a quotes tab. You can see here's my customer, Mr. Ben Smith. This is my quote, it's got a green tick. If I click on it, you can see that the client has accepted it. So everything is tracked and it keeps everything in order. So that's sending a quote, really easy. What we're gonna do next is we're gonna send an invoice. So in our imaginary job, we've sent the quote out, <clears throat> the customer accepted it, we've gone and done the work and now it's time to invoice them. So it's exactly the same again. So we're gonna press this new invoice button here. We're going to choose the customer. And this is where the Graham app's really clever. Nobody likes typing on mobile phones, you know, big thumbs, small screens, especially when you're in a rush. So everything is reusable. So the Graham app knows that there's an existing quote in the system for this customer. So you can simply recycle it. So you can click that button and you can pull it in. Now, one of the things which tends to happen on jobs is maybe the quote was X, but in reality, the price was Y. So you, all of this stuff can be uh, added to, changed and edited. So perhaps rather than just install a new boiler, I had to go and buy some miscellaneous items for hundred pounds. I can do that and I can quickly add that onto my invoice. And it's exactly the same. I can press the next confirm and I've created my invoice with really no effort whatsoever so you can see all the information on here in fact on the invoice we've gone to a little bit more details so you've actually got some quantities some unit costs some amounts some VAT rates again all of this can be um, edited you can show and hide some things and so we have lots of customers that actually don't really like to put the detail in especially around quotes but we have some customers that love to list everything out so people work in different ways so you can edit what uh, whatever you want on these, on these quotes and the invoices. So I'm gonna press send. And again, with no effort at all, I've managed to send a good looking invoice off to my customer. And again, all of this is tracked. So if you know you've sent it, you can always come back in and you can take a look to see whether or not it's been sent, if they've seen it as well, if the customer's opened it up, the Graham app will tell you. There's all sorts of information that you can get from this. So there we go. So if I hop into the sales tab again on the left hand side, you can see we were in the quotes tab. If I move to the sales invoices tab, you can see here's the customer, here's the invoice. And in fact, this uh, hasn't been paid yet. You can also mark these as paid. And you can send receipts to the customer. So really simple to manage your business and manage your initial, initial paperwork, your quote and your invoice paperwork without any hassle at all. However, the wonderful thing about the Graham app is actually we also have the Graham catalog on it. And, oh, excuse me, my computer wants to do something. 
what I can also do, I'm going to create an, I'm going to create another quote this time, but rather than um, invent some lines, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look at the Graham catalog and I'm going to choose some items for it and stick it onto my, onto my quote. So if I press the add from catalog button, rather than the, let me just go back and I'll do that a bit quickly. We have these two buttons here, add new item. That's what we did previously. We added our individual lines on, but we have this other button here, add from catalog. So if we choose the add from catalog button, the available catalogs in the product turn up. So we have trade saver on the left and we have the always available range on the right. Uh, I'll, I'll hop into trade saver. And on the first time, this will take a little bit of, a little bit of time to download. I'll just reduce the size but you can see it a bit easier. And there we go. We have the Graham catalog directly inside the product. Now this can be scrolled. This can be searched. Um, you can, for example, if I do a, if I search for copper, there must be something with copper in here. Here we go. A copper T equal, anything with the word copper in is turned up. And again, this works on the always available catalog as well. So if there's particular products you want to add to your quotes and your invoices, you can do this really easily. So just for the sake of the demo, I'll quickly choose this one here. Let me press the add button. And as you can see up in the right hand corner, we have a cart where we're actually beginning to add things onto it. Let me get rid of copper. Let me find something a bit more exciting, uh, maybe a shower. There we have a shower tray. So let's add our, add our shower tray in. And as you can see, we can quite quickly start to build up our basket with the items directly from the Graham catalog. Once I'm happy with that, once I've chosen the items I want, I press the back and you can see what this is doing. It's actually adding this into our managed pricing um, page. So you see we have three items that have come from the catalog. Now, if I want to, maybe edit this, maybe perhaps I'm sending it as a quote. I want to get the details in it, but I don't really want to give the customer the price that I'm buying it from Graham. You can click into it and everything can be edited. The other thing we have at the bottom here is this scrolling list of products. So if you don't want to hop into the catalog, what you can also do is you can press the add new item button and you can use this as a search. So I'll type the word shower again, and you can see in this, um, this section here, all the products that Graham offer are continuously being refined. So maybe if I want to choose that, I'm going to add a Myra thermostatic shower onto my list. The price and the information is added and I can press save. So there's really two ways to um, work with the catalog. You can, you, you can either click the button and flick through if you just want to browse, or if you actually know what it is you want, you can press the add new item button and you can add it directly. And again, all of this can be edited. You don't have to share this with the customer, um, but maybe you want to. If I press the next button, without any hassle, I've created, I'm creating a quote, which I'm gonna to send to my customer, which has items directly from the Graham catalog. Now it's interesting because when we speak to lots of our customers, the, the workflow tends to be a quote is created first. So they get a, an inquiry to do some work. They'll go to their customer's house or their business. They will produce a quote. And then they think to themselves, hmm, actually I'm not really sure how much this stuff costs. Most uh, people in the trade tend to cost based on knowledge. So I have an idea of, of what a Myra shower costs and I have an idea of what I charge for a Myra shower, but I don't really know how much it costs to get one of those. So this really shortcuts that problem. And it actually means that um, people that work in the trade can produce much more accurate quotes. Um, and uh, obviously when we're going to purchase orders in a moment, it, the whole thing sits together nicely. And you can do exactly the same for invoices. So if you want to actually add items to your invoice, which you're sending to the customer directly from the Graham catalog, you can do that. But what we're gonna do now is we're actually gonna create a purchase order. So a purchase order is done by pressing this button here. Or if I hop back into, oh, sorry, costs, you can see I have a tab for purchase orders. I can also press this button, but I'll do it from the home screen. If I press the new purchase order button, I press create purchase order. Rather than a customer popping up, as we had before, we had our customer, Mr. Ben Smith, we have our supplier turning up and our supplier is Grant the Plumbers Merchant. 
So we have all the information about Graham here. If we choose it, the first thing it's going to do is ask for your Graham account number. Now, you input your account number into this section here. If, if you don't know your account number, you can call it, call this number, and uh, Graham can help you. Uh, if you need to sign up for an account, you can click here. And the information on how to sign up for an account is also visible. So in this demo, I'll use my test account. Ah, hold on one second. I've got to remember what my test account is. Uh, 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 uh. There we go. So I've entered my information about the uh, my um, Graham account. I've chosen Graham as my supplier. And then it's asking me if I'd like to assign this to a customer. Now, again, if I want to um, always keep track of what I'm doing for my customers, this is a really neat way of seeing what I'm ordering for the customers. You don't have to do that. So what I'm going to do in this particular case, I'm just buying product for my business. I'm not buying it for a particular customer. So I can just press the unspecified customer. And again, we're back at this screen, which should be looking familiar now. So I can just press the add new item or I can press add from catalog. Let's press add from catalog and let's choose the always available range. And this will pop up. And I think one of the key things is to say on this call, um, these catalogs are updated every quarter. So when the new catalog comes out, it'll be automatically added to the app and that will be available. And also I believe Graham are freezing their prices to October. So that's very good. So there we go. Just as we were doing before, we can page through if we want to. We can hop through the pages. If I make it a little bit smaller, you should be able to see it a bit easier. It's exactly the same as if you were just flicking through a catalog. You can also search. So I'm going to create a purchase order um, for an Ecotech valent boiler. Let me do that. It's this one here. Sorry, the Zoom controls are messing around with my screen at the moment. So it's making it a bit of a challenge. There we go. I'll add it that way. Stop it messing around with the PDF. So you can see, as we did previously, you can really you can look through the PDF and you can find your items and you can click the link or you can press the add new item here. And you have all of the items which Graham uh, have, and you can filter them straight away. So you can choose it really quickly. And it's interesting, actually, talking to some of the registrations we've had already on the Graham app, um, quite how many people actually know the Graham part numbers seems to be quite remarkable. So you can also type that into the description as well, and that can be added straight away. So with no hassle, I've created a purchase order. Um, I've added some items to it. And the next thing, that the Graham app will ask me is actually, where do I want this delivered to? So you, there's a few things you can do here. You can have it delivered to your address. You can pick it up from the branch or you can use a specific delivery address. So if you click that, you can actually type into it as well. Now, interestingly enough, if I've chosen the customer, the customer's address will be here as well. So there's all sorts of different ways you can get product um, to the way it needs to be. So I'm gonna just choose my address, press next. And there we go. I've created a purchase order. So you can see the SKU, the description, the delivery address of where it's got to go, my information, and Graham's information. Now, if I press confirm, it's exactly the same as creating an invoice or a quote. You can see I have it here. So I'm going to press send. And actually, if we have Sham on the call, um, Sham, just to be aware, I'm going, to, I'm going to press send. So this isn't a real purchase order. Uh, don't dispatch this to my house because I can't afford a a Valiant Ecotech, I press send, and there we go. That's automatically been sent to Graham. And when Graham receives that, that's going into HQ, and actually that's going to be checked that this is a, a genuine purchase order, and then you know, there's a bit of a safety check, and that's going to be stored in our costs tab. So if I want to always keep track of what it is I've ordered from Graham, all I have to do is click on the cost tab here, you can see my document number. If I open that back up, you can see, it, see there it is. Now, this is fantastic because I can do this on my mobile. I can do this on my tablet. I can do this any time of the day. Um, it doesn't matter where I am. It's really easy 
to create purchase orders through this product and send it straight in to, to Graham. Now let's pretend that the purchase order has gone through, we've ordered the parts. There's another part to this, which is really important, and that's the supplier invoice. So I'm going to create a new supplier invoice. If I go to my costs. Actually, what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you a slightly quicker way to do this. If I go back to my costs and I open up my purchase order, what I can do, if I hover over the options button, you can see we have a button here which says convert to supply invoice. So if I choose that, what I've got now is a supplier invoice which has completely copied all the information over from my purchase order. And this is fantastic because it means that actually I can get this into my accounts without any hassle. And it's the part of, it's the missing part of the puzzle actually, which um, uh, really sort of stops a lot of people from managing their own accounts online. So when I talk to some of our customers, you know, the printout they get from their suppliers pretty much lives in the pocket or in the van until it's VAT day. And actually trying to get their hands on that afterwards to claim the VAT back can be a bit of a challenge. So without any hassle, I can go from purchase order to supplier invoice at a click of a button. Cool. So just to recap what we've done, we've created a, uh, a document which we've set with our own logos. We've created a quote which we sent to the customer. We've created an invoice which we sent to the customer. We've then used the Graham catalog to both create quotes and invoices with information from the Graham catalog which we've sent to the customer. And we've created a purchase order. There's a few other things I'd like to cover in this webinar. If we hop over to our finances tab, we also have the ability to export all of this information out. Um, I know I've got some questions I'm gonna answer in the chat in a moment, um, but actually one of the things we find is people tend, they tend to trust one person in business and that tends to be the accountant or the bookkeeper. And the accountant or the bookkeeper will tend to recommend that small businesses, especially trade businesses, will use an accountancy product. And that's great, accountancy products are, are really good, but the truth of the matter is an accountancy product is actually really useful for accountants more than people who are out on the road running their business. So the Graham app is completely complementary to this. We're not looking to replace accountancy products, but if you have an accountant and actually they want to get their hands on this information, really what they're after are two things, the sales invoices and the supplier invoices. All of that can be exported out of the Graham app and can go into a, a complementary product such as Zero or Sage or whatever it could be. It's also just worth pointing out that um, as part of the partnership between PowerNow and Graham is actually we have uh, the PowerNow product itself has some more features and more functionality which could be useful as well. So we have forms of certificates, we can do um, MTD VAT returns, but also on the finances side, it's a little bit more information in there. So actually they can connect up to their accountancy product automatically. Now the wonderful thing about the PowerNow and Graham partnership is actually the catalog, the, the uh, Graham catalog is also going to be available in PowerNow. So it doesn't matter uh, which one of these you use or if you're a branch manager, which one of these products your customers use, the Graham catalog will always be at their fingertips. Okay, um, I think the final thing I'd really like to cover is the support and training, which we're offering um, all Graham customers. If you look down here at the bottom right-hand corner, there's a yellow chat icon. If I click that, I can talk to anybody in the team and the PowerNow team are based on the Isle of Wight and they're real people at the end of the phone. So I can, you can simply just chat into this box. And if there's any questions which you might have about using the product, um, we can answer that really quickly. Uh, we're also doing uh, live uh, our demos that actually is very similar to this, uh, which we can actually help people get set up and get both creating purchase orders, browsing the catalog, but also running their business on here. Okay, so that is a 35,000 foot view of the Graham app. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take a quick look at the questions which we've had um, in the group chat. There's quite a lot. So if you could just give me a couple of seconds, or if you want to unmute yourself and you have any questions you'd like to ask, I'm very happy to answer them here. Uh, okay, so we have a question. <laughs> I'm pretty sure we don't have Bob Ross on this call, but hi, Bob Ross, nice to meet you. Um, Bob asks that he's currently using the account software. Um, he's sending a number of quotes each month and constantly chasing them up. Yeah, can it help? 
Absolutely, you can. So if you remember when I created the quote and sent that out to the customer, the customer had the ability to accept and reject the quote. Um, that's the first thing I just want to comment. Lots of people ask, why do we have the reject quote button? Surely that's bad news, that's negative. Um, actually, the interesting thing is customers do reject your quotes by never telling you. You know, they just don't contact you. So you're always chasing to basically be told that you lost the job or um, somebody else is doing it. So you can accept and reject it. The nice thing about the reject button is um, on our analysis, most people reject quotes because of price. So it gives you not a second bite of the cherry, it gives you the opportunity to actually have a conversation with the customer to have a discussion around price as well. So that's incredibly useful. Uh, but just to carry on with this point, again, I mentioned that everything in Power Now is tracked. As soon as the customer gets that email um, and has opened it, actually, sorry, I said Power Now, Graham app, uh, the Graham app will actually tell you that that's happened. So you get a push notification on your phone straight away saying that Mr. Smith has opened his quote and it's a great opportunity actually just to quickly maybe, maybe give Mr. Smith a call 10 minutes afterwards just to see if, um, if he liked it. So that's that. Um, uh, Bob asked, secondly, I tried to use the catalog and ask my Graham account number and I can't remember it. <laughs> Where would I find that? Well, I, as you can see, Bob, I couldn't actually remember my test uh, number. That is quite easy. I think you, you get an account number when you sign up, um, but you can just call the number which pops in, in this screen and they can uh, help you out with that. Okay. Um, oh, so thank you. Somebody's answered that as well. Uh, Steve Madden. Okay, really like look at this so far. I never got into the store. I, ne I never get to go into the store, so the order will make life easier. What happens after I send my order form? Will I be contacted or automatically billed? So no, you won't be automatically billed. I think that's the thing I just want to point out. Um, Graham will contact you, Steve, and they will uh, confirm your purchase order with you. Uh, James W, a couple of questions. Can I track my expenses and can my accountant get access? Okay, so accountant, I think we've answered. Um, tracking your expenses is actually something I didn't really cover on here. Um, expenses is a, frankly a, a boring part of, of running businesses. But if, we, if you hop into costs, um, can you remember we created the supplier invoice? We also have a tab here for expenses. It works in exactly the same way as um, when I created an invoice or a quote you can just press this button here, this new expense button, and you can create an expense and that will then be logged. And the wonderful thing is it's all going into your accounts. So if you're exporting this via your finances, you're seeing your sales invoices, your supplier invoices and your expenses. And if you're a VAT registered business, uh, James, that means that you have both sides of the equation and your VAT can be worked out incredibly simply. Um, okay. I've, got a private question about logos. How many logos can you add to the documents? Um, actually, that's a great question. You can add as many logos as you like, actually. Um, some of our customers go a bit over the top with it, uh, but it's apps. Let me just quickly show you. If you click on this, I'll just go back here. If you click on this cog on the top right hand corner, this will take you into the settings and we have this document and logo settings option. If you click on that, click on this edit layouts and logos and that takes you into at the very beginning of this demo remember we were looking at the different um, document layouts and we're adding logos that's where you can add all that information in but again if you are interested in using uh, the product to run your business and you'd actually like us to do that for you please just press that yellow button and we can get you set up as well so it's, it's something we do all the time we can do it in minutes um, Okay, is there any way to view the catalog without having to make a quote? Yep, price checking, absolutely, Andy, you can do that. If you click on this, this green banner, this grand banner, if you click on that, you can choose your catalog and that will pop up immediately. Um, we probably have a few people on this call that were beta testers for the app. Um, just one of the things which came in uh, during that beta testing is these, the, it would take a long time for these things to load, especially on 4G or 3G. Um, we've sped this up an awful lot now. So the, the catalogs are large files. So we've tried to optimize it. So yeah, you can absolutely check it for that. And if you use the search, you can just quickly find the product as well. Um, Darren, yep, Ben, as well as acceptance or rejection, can the system confirm you that the customer has downloaded the quote from the app? Um, that's a great one. We can't confirm that you've downloaded the, the quote. Um, but what you can see is we, the quote has been opened 
um, uh, by the customer. So it's basically what we do is we get a call back from the email that is the email has been opened. Um, so if somebody's questioning that they didn't actually receive it, you can really quickly open the quote. You can look at the top of the status and you can see straight away. So we, some, we can't tell if it's been downloaded, but we can tell if it's been opened. <clears throat> Uh, okay, and we have, I've got two more questions. Oh, okay, that's interesting. That's a great question. One about um, invoice and quote numbers. <clears throat> the question is, can I use my own invoice and quote numbers because I'm using a system today and I'd like to move to this? Yeah, absolutely you can. Um, that's a great question. So if you hop into the settings, um, if you hop into, oh, you're testing me. Is that under general settings? Or is it? No, it's not. It's under document and logo settings again, numbering rules. You can set your numbers here. So you can add a prefix and a suffix to the numbers which uh, the Gray map will automatically generate. And you can also start from somewhere else. So if you want to, you know, maybe you're in the middle of a number run and you would like to continue it, you can do that as well. So, but that's probably um, getting a little bit more advanced. If, again, if you'd like us to do that for you and to set that up, um, or maybe even have a conversation with your accountant or bookkeep bookkeeper, uh, we can do that. Okay, I uh, yep, and the final question, yeah, is, is another one about purchase orders and how that works. Well, I think we've probably covered that. Okay, wonderful. Well, we're done. So, oh, <laughs> Darren stopped in with another question. Um, yeah, you absolutely, so Darren's asking, can you add purchases that haven't been processed via, um, uh, via via the app purely to complete your purchase ledger. Yeah, you can absolutely do that, Darren. So if you hop into your costs, you see the supplier invoices. So maybe your you have some old um, supplier invoices from Graham or whoever, and you'd like to add those into the system. If you choose that, if you press the new supplier invoice, we have two options. We have a quick supplier invoice and a single one. A single one is allows you, gives you the ability to take a photo of that supplier invoice if you want a, a physical record of it, um, or you can press the quick supplier invoice entry, and it's a bit of a uh, large form, but you can put your information straight straight into this and press save. So a lot of people will tend to pile their supplier invoices up or their expenses up, and just want to rattle through it at the end of the month. Well, you can do that really quickly with this. So that will these will create supplier invoices which can go into the accounts. So that's under cost supplier invoices. Excellent. Okay, do we have any more questions at all about the product? Um, I think it's just worth pointing out this video is being recorded, so we will uh, make this available after the event. So if you'd like to rewatch it, if there's anything which you didn't quite understand, or if, again, if you have a question and you'd just like to ask. Uh, register for the Gray map and use the yellow chat button. Uh, we're incredibly quick to get back to people. So if there's, if you have a question, um, you may be not comfortable of asking in a public forum and you may be like to ask privately, just press that button and we can answer that quickly. Wonderful. Okay. Well, if we don't have any more questions, uh, I'd like to thank you all for coming along to this uh, Zoom meeting. It was great. I think during the peak we had nearly 20 people in it. Um, some fantastic questions, actually. That was really good. And I hope you found this useful. And again, if you have any questions, please just jump in and press the yellow chat button. Thank you all for your time. Cheerio.